Something triggered tell that one day I want to sit in that chair. That was the, the desire I had. Lah. I didn't tell anybody, to be honest. He really scolded me upside down. That's where I realized that, hey, life is not just about me. Eh. I think if my teachers were, were to see this video, right, they know that each time they have to look for me around the school. So rugby was a religion. It taught me the value of... Hi, my name is Nizam Adli. I'm 45 years old and I'm a property consultant. I'm, I'm the eldest in the family, so a bit of expectation there. I'm always constantly wanting to be number one. I don't know how it came about. I got into Raffles Institution, so it was a first for the family. You know, it was really something that I didn't expect. I didn't even dream of, but the in, internal drive was there on hindsight. Lah. When I played rugby for my school for four years, I was captain uh, of the rugby team. I was in a prefectural board and I was also chairman of the Malay Society. Yeah. It was really something that I believe brought something out of me. Lah. I think if my teachers were, were to see this video, right, they know that each time they have to look for me around the school because I will be either in on the field rather than studying or revision. Lah. I think that, that was what I can remember. So rugby was a religion. It taught me the value of wanting something badly and working towards it with greed and determination. I remember very clearly the first day I was there after talking to my boss. When I step out of the office room, I tell myself, I don't know, something triggered tell that one day I want to sit in that chair. That was the, the desire I had. I didn't tell anybody, to be honest. It was really surreal uh, when I got the email from the big boss because there were a few more candidates. In my opinion, more deserving, but uh, by God's grace, I got the job. We live a very, I must say, better than average lifestyle. Uh. Travelling is no issue. We love good food. We never blink an eye, you know, if you were to spend uh, on just expensive meal, you know hotel, buffets, whatever, no issue. I mean, going to restaurants is something that is a norm. And of course, cars. I mean, who doesn't love cars, right? You know, it was really something that I just plunged into because no business acumen, no, no business background. I thought, yeah, easy to make money. Lah. It was, Easier said than done, of course, you know. It's a very uh, painful lesson uh, because it translates to a lot of things. Uh, I felt overconfident about things. So it was really the mentality, that mindset that wasn't in the right frame of mind. Uh. It was more of, I wanted to prove to her even that I can come out and do things on my own. Ego does set in. I have been to so much. I know what is it to be up there. I know how things can be done. I know how can I can convince people. No doubt she's, she's doing well, but it's just fair that I must do better. Because I'm still paying my car installments. I still need to pay my credit card bill. So it, it really, I tell you, the most stressful time in my life. And to a certain point of time, I didn't want to admit I went into a depression. That, that's how I felt at point I said, I'm just going to find a job or drive taxi or whatever. They, you know, that. But my parents don't know. This is something that I kept to myself for the longest time. I have a few dollars in my EasyLink card. I think enough for the bus ride. But, you know, in my wallet, there was uh, for a $5 note. Yeah. It was my last $5. It's either I donate to the mosque or I buy lunch later. I felt that uh, the world crumbling down. But that $5 actually gave me the strength. God sent a message to me that whether I want to uh, step out of it or I just want to go into you know, this black hole forever, I just put it in the box and I say, God, please help me. There was doubts, but it triggered me to believe that you know, God is there and a family is there. 
after that, 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 that incident, after I came back, I told my wife that I really need somebody to help mentor me in this real estate. It became clear to me that it was not so much about a mentor-mentee kind of relationship. It was more like a big brother to me, which I never had. Lah. It got me from here to here in terms of my mindset that I'm able to do it. To put it very clearly, he really scolded me upside down. Woke me up lah, from my deep slumber, whatever you call it. That's where I realized that hey, life is not just about me. Eh. There was a bit of transformation, I must say. How powerful the mind is, eh, it, it allows you to transform, especially with the right kind of advice, the right kind of push, the nudge that he gave me. So it really, really, I tell you, it was one of the highlights in my life. Lah. To put it very simply, you cannot be a boss all your life. You want to lead, you must be a follower. I think that that's key. It's really about people. In property, it's not transactional. I think it's a people's relationship business. So very important uh, that we must understand. Uh, we must put ourselves in the person's shoes. Have empathy. Then we know where we stand. I think that that's key. And of course, uh, listening ear. Lah. Whatever wealth you have, it's about sharing. So you can share your wealth with your family, your friends. I think that's important. To grow wealth, you must share your wealth. Whether you know them or you don't know them, I tell you, God has His ways of making the path much easier for you. That's how I feel.